Recall that a rational expression is any or a ra anything, anytime we see the word rational, we think of things that can be written as a fraction. We've talked about rational number sets, which is uh, numbers that can be written as a fraction. We've talked about rational equations, where there's an equation where there's fractions in it. Um, and here we're going to be looking at rational expressions, which are just not equations. We just want to rewrite and simplify fraction-looking things. Um, we've done this a little bit in the in the last chapter. Uh, we started with fractions where we had something like 15 over 40. And when we were looking to simplify a fraction, what we were looking for was a number that would go in evenly into both the top and the bottom. For example, in 15 over 40, we could divide both the top and the bottom by 5 and come up with a new equivalent expression uh, that would be reduced. So we'd end up with 3 on the top and 8 on the bottom. And this would be its most simplified form. This concept applies all the way across the board, whether there's numbers in your fractions or variables in your fractions, or as we'll come to see today, even pluses and minuses in their fractions. When, anytime that we're trying to simplify a fraction, what we're looking to do is we are looking to find common factors that we can divide out from the top and the bottom. People like to use the word cancel, and I hate the word cancel because you lose track that what you're really doing is you're dividing out common factors. And that really is an important differentiation. We're not just crossing out whatever we want. We're dividing the top and the bottom by the same sort of things in order to get things to work. For example, here with 36, xy to the fourth and 15x to the third y to the fourth, we're looking for things that are common factors that would go in evenly on both the top and the bottom. In this case, 3 will go in evenly into both the top and the bottom. So we can reduce the top by dividing by 3 to get 12. We can reduce the bottom by dividing by 3 and get 5. Now when we look at the x's, we're also reducing common factors. If we, we looked at these in this way before when we were learning about this in class in the last chapter, we had 1x on top and 3x's on the bottom, so we were going to divide out one of the x factors on both the top and the bottom, and we're left with an x squared just on the bottom. So in this case, we divide out the x, and we divide out one of the x's from the bottom, and we're left with x squared on the bottom. With y to the fourth, we are again looking to divide out common factors, and when we look here, we can divide by y, 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 and all of the y's are gone from both the top and the bottom. So by simplifying and dividing out these common factors, I end up with only a 12 on the top. On the bottom, I have a 5 and an x squared, and the y's completely canceled from my expression, and this is my final simplified solution. Now as I continue on, keep in mind that dividing what we need to do when we want to try to, to cancel things out or cross things out in our expression to simplify, what we're really doing here is we're dividing out those common factors. Remember, factors mean multiplication. So when we come to a problem like problem 3 here, notice we have 6x plus 10 on top and 3x plus 5 on the bottom. We see so many tempting things to cross out. We see x's that are the same and numbers that are the same or that can at least go in evenly, and we'd like to start tackling those. The problem is, right now, we do not have factors. On the top, we have 6x plus 10. We can't cancel out the x because it's not a factor. It's 6 times x, and there's a plus 10 there. So we are not allowed to cancel out anything next to a plus or minus because it's not a factor. So this is Sherry's rule of thumb here. If it's next to a plus or minus, you can't cross it out. unless you do the whole expression. So what do I mean by that? That means right now, looking at this problem, the six is the 6x is next to a plus, the 10 is next to a plus, I'm not allowed to cross anything out. So what I'd like to do instead is I would first like to try to factor the problem if it's next to a plus or minus, you need to completely factor those expressions. So if we look at the top, notice that 2 will go into both of those. So what I can do here is I can pull a 2 out from the top, and if I do that, I'd be left behind with 3x plus 5. 
Okay, so I factored the top. Now I do have some factors. I have a two here that's fair game to cross out with things, and I have a three X plus five, and I could cancel that whole group out with other stuff. Now on the bottom, see, I have a three X plus five. This is kind of like it's being, so here, the two is being multiplied by three X plus five. We've got a three X plus five factor on the top, and we have a three X plus five factor on the bottom, because that's all that there is. Now we can cross out the 3x plus 5 as an entire group. And what I'm left with at the very end is just plain old 2. You could write it as 2 over 1 if you wanted, but that, that is all that's left after we go through and multiply and cross everything out. Let's look at question 4 here, very similar. Right now everything is next to a plus or a minus. So before I do anything, I need to try to factor the top and the bottom and see then if once I have factors, then if there's anything I can do to reduce um, and divide out. So here again, if I look on the top, 2 goes into both of those and leaves me with a 3x plus 5. On the bottom, I have a 3x minus 5. Guess what? I do not have the same things right now. Um, this has a plus. This has a minus, so they are not the same factors. We're not allowed to cross them out. And we can't do anything else because these are next to pluses and minuses, and these are next to pluses or minuses. So it's either all of 3x plus 5 or nothing. So in this case, it's nothing. Um, your final answer could be written like this, which is simplified in factored form, or you could report your final answer like this, which I have already checked to see cannot be reduced or factored any farther. So really make sure that you watch out and if you see pluses or minuses in the problem you need to think factor first and then look to see what can divide out that's really all there is to most of this section it's just that we have to sometimes our factoring things are a little bit bigger and so let's go ahead and see what happens in those instances we're going to get lots of practice on what you did in the in the last homework assignment so here, not everything's next to pluses or minuses on the top and the bottom before I can even think about doing anything no matter how tempting it is, don't do it. They're all next to pluses and minuses. Factor the top, factor the bottom. So let's go through and see what we need to do. To factor the top, and I'm going to just do these as separate problems for a second, so I've got some room here. To get x plus squared plus x minus 6, what I'm looking for is two sets of parentheses. I'm looking for things that multiply to get x squared, so x times x. I'm looking for things that multiply to get um, negative 6. Uh, so 3 and 2, we'll need 1 to be a plus and 1 to be a minus. And now we want to check our middle terms. This will give me an x squared, minus 2x, plus 3x, and a minus 6. When I put those together, negative 2x plus 3x gives me a plus 1x in the middle. That's what I need. So I actually found that on my first time. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that up here. Uh, this is my factored form for the top. So I have an x plus 3 and an x minus 2 on top to make that work. On the bottom, I'm going to need to try x squared plus 8x plus 15 and see if I can factor that. No common factors to pull out, but because I have that squared, I can go ahead and try my two parentheses factoring. To get x squared, I need x times x. To get 15, I'll try 5 and 3. It's positive, so I need those signs to be the same. And now I want to double check, do I get 8x in the middle? And sure enough, I actually do x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x, 5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 3 is plus 15. Gives me a plus 8x in the middle, which is exactly what I need. So on the bottom now, I have an x plus 5 as one factor, and an x plus 3 as my second factor. So when I go to try to solve this particular problem, and if I want to simplify, now that I have factors, I can look to see if there's any common factors on the top and the bottom. And I notice that there's an x plus 3 on the top and an x plus 3 on the bottom. So I'm going to divide by that on both sides, and that's going to cross that out on the top, and it's going to cross that out on the bottom. And what I'm left with is an x minus 2 on the top and an x plus 5 on the bottom, and that's it. That is my final answer, x minus 2 over x plus 5. I factored it out, found common factors that I was able to divide out to reduce and simplify, Oop. and then my final answer is just what's left over. Again, don't cross those x's out because they're next to pluses and minuses. It's everything or nothing when it comes to those. So we're done with that particular problem. With number six, we're going to do the same sort of thing. We need to factor everything's next to pluses and minuses. We have all those separate terms. Don't cancel anything. Look for common factors before you do anything. 
On the top, we had x squared plus x minus 20. We want a no GCF that we can pull out there, no greatest common factor. So x times x gives me x squared. I'm looking for things that multiply to get negative 20, and I need a middle term of 1 to match up. To get negative 20, I can try 5 and 4. I need to get a negative 20, so 1 has to be positive and 1 negative. If I multiply this out, I'll get x squared plus 4x minus 5x minus 20. And in the, that gives me in the middle a negative x. So x squared, this is a minus x, and I needed a plus x with the minus 20. So right values, wrong signs. I'm going to go ahead and change those signs here. So I'm going to end up with x plus 5, and x minus 4 is going to get that to work. Okay. So that is what the top of my expression here is going to look like. I'm going to have x plus 5, and I'm going to have x minus 4. Now, on the bottom here, we had a 4 minus x. This is not actually in a nice form right now because the values are in the wrong order. We see this x minus 4 up on top, and we're pretty tempted to do something with those, but you can't do it the way it looks right now because x minus 4 and 4 minus x aren't the same thing. Um, however, if we look at 4 minus x, it's not in its nicely factored form, and this was why I kind of went through that idea of what does it mean to be completely factored. First of all, you want uh, the highest powers of your variable to be first, which means I should write this as negative x plus 4. Then you want to make sure that that leading term, that first term, is always positive. And since it's not, I'm going to pull a negative out of this expression. When I pull a negative out from the negative x, I'm left with positive x. When I pull a negative x, out of the positive 4, I end up with a negative 4. And again, remember, you can multiply this through. That gives me a negative x and a plus 4, which is what I was trying to get back at. So this is actually the common factored form that I want to use for my expression. And now you see why it's so important that you do that, because when it's in this form, you can see that I actually can do some crossing out with that x minus 4. This will cancel out with this. And what I'm left with is that negative 1 on the bottom. So I've divided the top and the bottom by that x minus 4. A couple of ways that you can write this final answer. You can write it as x plus 5 over negative 1. And if you do that, I'm totally happy. That does work out just fine. The other way that you can write it or think of it, remember dividing by negative 1 just makes negative whatever you had. So you could write it as negative x plus 5 as well. And that is also an equivalent nice way that you could write that expression. Uh, either way there would be fine. One last example here with the simplifying things. Um, again, we do want to keep in mind that completely factored form. And if, like in this expression, lots of everything's by pluses or minuses, so you've got a factor before you can do anything at all. When we do the top, we have that 3x cubed plus 29x squared plus 18x. When I look at this expression, it looks kind of crazy. There is, in fact, uh, the powers are in the right order. Leading term is positive. However, I have that problem that the x is, or they all have an x in it, so I'm going to pull that x out. 3 goes into this, but not into 29, so I can't do anything there. So I'm going to just pull out the x. I'm going to be left with 3x squared plus 29x plus 18. Now, I still have an x squared inside, so I'm going to have to multiply, try to break that, uh, try to break this trinomial down into multiplying two different binomials together. So I'm going to have to do that factoring. 3x squared is going to be 3x times x. It's the only way we can do that. Notice that this is does have a number in front of it, so we've got to be a little bit careful. We might need to try a few extra combinations when we do stuff. Um, we have a few different ways that we can get 18. It's 6 times 3, or 2 times 9, or 1 times 18, and I'm not 100% sure which one's going to work yet. So let's just go through them. If we try 6 and 3, everything's going to need to be plus because we need a positive value here, So um, or the same signs. So when we try, if we try 6 and 3, when we do that, we're going to get 3x squared plus 9x plus 6x plus 18. That gives me a 15x in the middle, and that's not going to work. Keep Remember that 6 and 3, if we put them in a different order, we, could, we get a different combination of values. So here to get 3x squared, we have 3x times x. 
to get 18, I'm going to try 3 and 6 instead of just 6 and 3. When I turn those around here, I'm going to end up with, let's multiply it out, 3x squared plus 18x plus 3x plus 18. I end up with a 21x in the middle, which is also, again, not what I want. So I tried both ways for 6 and 3 as factors of 18, and they didn't work. Let's hope 2 and 9 work. All right, so again, I'm trying to get this 3x squared plus 29x plus 18. So we have 3x times x to get the 3x squared. Let's try a plus 2 and a plus 9. When we do this, we're going to end up with 3x squared from the first. Outsides, 3x times 9 gives me 27x. Insides, 2 times x gives me 2x. And lasts, 2 times 9 gives me plus 18. Looking at those middle terms together, I get a 29x in the middle. Ta-da! Hooray! I found exactly what I needed. So here, the 3x plus 2 times x plus 9 gives me this factor. There was an x out Oops, there was an x out in front. That's still a part of my answer. Um, and so this is going to be my completely factored form for the numerator of my expression up here. So x times 3x plus 2 times x plus 9. That gives me the top completely factored. Now if I want to cross anything out, the bottom has to be completely factored as well. Because remember, if it's next to a plus or minus, you have to cross the whole expression out, not just anything touching it. So let's try factoring x squared minus 81. We are in the correct order. There's no greatest common factor to pull out. When we go to break things down, there's no middle term, which seems a little bit troublesome. But remember, if there's no middle term, we've seen this before, you can treat it like it's a 0 that we're trying to get in the middle. And that actually works out really nicely in this particular problem. So to get x squared, we need x times x. No number in front, so that's nice. A little bit less to worry about. To get 81, we have a few choices, one of which is 9 times 9, and one of them needs to be positive and one negative. That one is actually going to work for us great. Because here, when we multiply it out, x times x is x squared. On the outside, we get a plus 9x. And on the inside, we have a matching minus 9x. So we end up getting 0x's in the middle and no middle term, which is exactly what we're hoping for. And then, of course, with the different signs, we end up with the minus 81 that we need at the very end. So that works out really well. So when I come back up here, I factor the top to this. I factor the bottom to be x minus 9 times x plus 9. And now I have common factors that I can divide out. Notice on the top I have an x plus 9, and on the bottom I have an x plus 9, which is fantastic. Those will cross out. And what I'm left with behind is an x times a 3x plus 2 on the top and an x minus 9 on the bottom. This is totally fine for your final answer. It's simplified but in its factored form, and you can leave it like that. The only other acceptable answer would be multiplying the numerator out after canceling, which would be 3x squared plus 2x on top with an x minus 9 on the bottom. But I'm totally happy with the, the answer in this particular form right here.